Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we are looking at something quite exciting. So this is the Lilygo T5 4.7 S3 Pro e-paper. Remember that? Well I think we're just going to call it the T5 S3 Pro for now. So what is this thing? Well essentially it's an ESP32 device with a really cool e-paper display all in a nice kind of enclosed kind of housing which basically looks a little bit like an iPhone 5, is that an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4? I can't remember, but yeah, it's around that sort of same kind of form factor. And I have to say, it does feel really, really nice in the palm of the hand. It's actually got a little bit of weight to it as well. The form factor is nice and the sort of casing is basically a bit like the Lilygo T-Deck Plus, this sort of same kind of material that they're using on that. Um, you might have noticed here, we've actually got wireless charging. They say it's MagSafe, but I have actually tested it out. I'll show you in a minute. I've tested it out on the back of my Samsung and it does actually kind of charge on that. So that's quite interesting. So of course, like most of the devices that I feature on the channel at the moment, this has lower, so long range radio, which can be used for like mesh networking. Currently there's no mesh-tastic firmware for this at the moment, which is kind of unusual. Usually these devices out the gate um, have mesh-tastic support, but I believe they're sort of waiting on some kind of um, agreement to be signed um, for that. There will be Ripple support for this, so that's a good thing. But um, yeah, no mesh tastic at the moment. So let's have a look at the specs then. So it's an ESP32 S3 room. Um, we've got 16 megabytes of flash and eight megabytes of PS RAM as well. So it's similar to the T-Deck um, there. And we've got wireless, we've got 2.4 gig, Wi-Fi and BLE5 as well. So again, same as the T-Deck and T-Deck Plus. But this has got a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. Um, and that is the inclusion of a real-time clock and it's also got a battery management chip uh, as well. So that's really good because previously we haven't had any battery management on a lot of these devices to sort of monitor, you know, what, what power is coming in and going out, which I'll show you in a minute because there's actually a really cool little kind of app they've included um, that shows you that. So it's got a Semtec SX1262 lower chip. Um, I believe it's the same as the others. You have different versions for the different regions. So there's basically two, two versions, 433 and 868. Um, which also covers the 915 band as well. And for the display, it's a 4.7 inch ultra low power e-paper um, with 16 grayscale levels, which is gonna look really nice for like maps and stuff like that. Uh, once we get those on Ripple, that will look amazing. Um, and this is obviously a 4.7 inch uh, display with 540 by 960. Um, now I've never been a massive fan of like e-paper displays, but um, I tell you, this does look really, really nice. And the fact that this is a capacitive touchscreen as well on an e-paper, which is really nice. Um, Multi-point, I believe, as well. Two points um, multi-touch. So that's quite interesting. Um, so you can see here, we've gone into the settings menu um, and you can just literally, obviously, slide up. So this is the thing about e-paper. You get this kind of like, obviously, refresh, which you're probably familiar with the T-Echos, like these little, these little things. Um, so you get this kind of like, that refresh cycle thing, which on this, it looks like you can adjust that down to down to one. So there you go. I mean, obviously that might make it a little bit less accurate, but I think that's a bit more usable. But that backlight is, is incredibly bright. I mean, you probably can't see it from the camera here, but it is very, very bright. So you're gonna be able to see this and probably even use this as a bit of a torch as well um, when it's dark. But the fact is, if you actually turn the screen completely, or the backlight, so if you turn it right down to zero, um, that is so visible. And if you're using this device outside, you're gonna see that display so clearly, even in direct sunlight. That's one of the big advantages of this sort of display type. So let's have a closer look at the firmware that comes loaded on this device. So this is kind of the same as a lot of the Lilygo devices that when they arrive to you, they'll have this like test firmware on that shows you all of the features that they can, these devices can do. Um, so yeah, basically if you just tap on the first one here, um, we can see we've got the clock. That's like the real time clock. You might notice, cause I've messed around with the um, display settings. You might see the remnants of the, of the previous screen a little bit because I, you know, was fiddling around with that e-paper refresh rate. So that is something that obviously, you know, people that do firmware for this stuff will, um, you know, get right, I should imagine in, in the different versions. Um, so yeah, next up, there's a little lower app thing here that, sh that basically displays, um, you know, some info about the lower chip and it, it does actually do a, 
ascend on a bit of a rogue frequency so we're not gonna <laughs> we're not gonna do that on that they should really set the frequency to a channel um that's kind of allowed for the region they're sending it i don't know how that possible that would be but um yeah you don't want it transmitting somewhere where it shouldn't be um anyway so the next one up we've got sd card as well yep so this has got an sd card slot in the side here um much like the t deck and t deck plus you've got sd card um support there as well so you know for things like i think at the moment the only firmware that uses this well there's, there's two things you can do with this actually there's the bootloader um software which you can put on here now which kind of boots into a um a kind of you know a well yeah bootloader effectively and then you can choose which firmware you install from the sd card that is now obviously available for the for the t deck um not for this so hopefully we'll see support for that on the uh going forward um but also with the ripple firmware we've got support for map tiles and stuff like that uh for the mesh radio networking um so you can see maps and stuff like that and everything's installed on the sd card so that's pretty neat and um, just a note as well about these buttons on the top so you've got the normal uh reset button which just resets the device completely into you know back to the beginning um, so that is doing a complete reboot. We've got a power button as well, which is nice because none of these devices usually have like a power button. But because we've got that chip, I suppose, the um, battery management, we can have a power button now. Um, so we've got boot as well. And we've also got a GPIO uh, switch as well. So that's another feature that we can use for for doing, um, for triggering things as well. Maybe like, like a deep sleep or something like that. You could probably have... Um, connected to that i don't know there's there's different things you can do with the sp32 i'm not like a real expert on that um so settings menu was we've already seen the settings menu that was like to change the display uh parameters and stuff like that um again this firmware is not really usable for anything it's just to demo the device um the test feature they do which just shows you uh what things are working maybe it's for their purposes really but um you can see that you know the touch and the RTC and the low is working. The SD card, there's nothing in the SD card slot, so it's it's coming up there. And obviously no Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, you I think you can do something with this. Um, there is an app, uh, ESP Touch, which you can maybe connect to with this. But what I really like about this display is look, you can see like you can use QR codes because it's so such a sort of high resolution. Um, I wonder if it will actually scan on my phone. Look at that, it does. It actually scans even that small one. Let's try and get it under the camera. It's gravitating towards that one. <laughs> but yeah, so it's sending you off to GitHub, that one. And then it's sending you off to like presumably like the App Store or something like that for, for the iOS one. How cool is that? So next up, we've got the little battery information thing here. Now this is super interesting because obviously this shows you the power of having a, a proper power management um, system on board this device. So look, you can see you know, the voltage of the battery, you can see the current going out, the instantaneous current, the charging current, um, you can see the status, it knows that it's not charging at, at the moment, um, capacity, I don't think the capacity is configured on here or anything like that, but obviously it's refreshing uh, each time uh, with the screen display. That is not a button, by the way. Actually, no, it is. I didn't think that was a button, but it's gone back to the, it's like a reset button. Yeah, I didn't, it wasn't doing anything the first time I was pressing it, but yeah, <laughs> there you go, I'm learning as well. But yeah, so if we get a USB lead and we plug it in the side here, so you've got a USB-C um, charge port on the back here, just plug that in there, you can see here, this status has changed to fast charging, and we've got a charge current of 800 milliamps going in. So neat, super neat, and temperature, I don't believe it's 35 degrees in there, but... Um, it could be. So obviously things like this you could configure to not charge a battery when it's you know low uh, freezing temperatures if you're using this outside in a in the Arctic or something like that um, or the UK. So I've just plugged it into a power delivery charger just to see it, it charges off of power delivery but it's obviously um, still charging at the same rate. Um, I think this is only a small battery anyway so you wouldn't want to charge it much faster than 800 milliamps anyway it's going to be done pretty quick but in this firmware you can see the energy going in at 93 it's counting uh, the milliamp hours going in so there's a lot of work to be done with the firmware because obviously you want to do you want to register maybe a full charge and then you know the firmware could actually have a very very accurate um, battery 
uh, capacity left gauge because it knows what's actually coming in and going out. Really cool stuff. As I said before, this does have wireless charging on the back. So let's just try and show you that. Um, basically, you've got the, the charge thing there. The phone's buzzed. Wait for this screen to reset. There you go, fast charging. Um, I have seen this go a bit higher. There you go, I think it's sort of climbing now, 200 milliamps, but I mean, absolutely brilliant. So very cool stuff indeed. One thing about this device you might have noticed, it hasn't got a GPS. So if that's important to you, then you know this device might not be for you. But you know, you could probably add a GPS. There's, you know, serial port, I think, on the bottom there, which you could probably add one if you needed to. But aside from that, it's going to be really interesting to see where the firmware goes with this. Um, lots of possibilities. And yeah, I'm looking forward to trying out different mesh radio systems on this device. As I say, this um, 16 level grayscale has got my interest. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I think this is about 99 bucks or something. There's some pre-website uh, page that they've got up. Um, I don't know if that's final yet, but yeah, 99 bucks um, and whatever that translates to in UK. So not the cheapest thing in the world, but it is pretty cool. Catch you next time.